Joining us in our studio is Gary Smith, the director of a prominent event each year in Essex County, New York, the Lake Placid Film Festival. Welcome, Gary. Great to be here. And it's 2023. Yep. And how many films do you have this we year? We have 23 unique feature length films this year. Okay, and we're celebrating 22 years of the festival. That's correct, because we missed one in 2020. Well, every year you have such a variety of feature films and short subjects and documentaries, and I understand you have a documentary that's going to really appeal to fans of early rock and roll. We sure do. Uh, the Stones and Brian Jones. He was brilliant. He was a brilliant musician. He shocked everybody with the quality of his playing. We all dedicated ourselves to the band, and Brian more so than anybody else, because it was his band in the beginning, so it meant the world to him more than it did to the rest of us. Brian Jones actually was the one that created the brand and, uh, and his unique take on uh, making music and what do we do with this group? How does it work for the future? And the people that are in it are Marianne Faithful and of course uh, well, Eric Burden is in it and uh, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger and uh, all of them. So it's a wonderful film on the history of, as you said, rock and roll. What a sad and moving story it looks like with this wonderful archival footage. And I think that's the value, one of the great values of the film festival, really. So many of these stories are, are sad and, and they're elated and it's the, it's the very highest highs and really I think the very lowest lows. And these people are so focused on, on their art and so focused on making it happen and getting back up when they fall. It's, they're wonderful stories, everyone. Well, the world sadly lost Brian Jones at the age of 27. And another entertainer who lost his life at an early age was Canadian actor John Candy. And his film is going to appeal to fans of comedy and winter sports. Our uh, opening film this year on Thursday evening, 7 o'clock, is Cool Runnings. It's 30th anniversary uh, of that film. And John Candy was the outstanding player, but there were the others that are in it. And this year, uh, Paul, we have John Morgan with us, who uh, was the announcer in the film and a resident of Saranac Lake. And we also have uh, Chris Stokes. Uh, Chris uh, actually wrote the sequel uh, to Cool Runnings. Uh, very involved, brother was in it, very involved in it, um, and is currently the president of the Jamaican Bobsled Federation. And uh, Chris is here with us, John, and they will do introduce that film and do the Q&A following. Well, the Olympics, they're so huge in the Lake Placid area, and I'm also interested in the other kinds of films that will appeal to people living in the Adirondack region. Well, one of the ones that, uh, that we think will be particularly relevant is one on Rockwell Kent called A Dreamer's Search. And uh, Eric Downs has done it. Uh, it's based on uh, Rockwell Kent's uh, visits and trips to Alaska. And uh, there are actors actually doing it, so it's not a documentary, but it is a wonderful story and, uh, and tracks very close to what Rockwell Kent did. I know it'll draw a lot of interest in this area. And Eric Downs is the filmmaker. Eric lives in Alaska. He'll be down here with us also for that. And then we have a a uh, film on Russell Banks and Dennis Mueller will be here to uh, introduce that and I write to be a better person is the working name of it right now and the interesting thing about this one uh, Paul is this is actually a film in progress uh, it's not a finished film um, and Dennis will be here with segments that have been filmed uh, throughout Russell's uh, probably last 20 years now you gotta do a whole book that's as good as those three places. I think that'll be fascinating for everyone. I had the pleasure of interviewing Russell Banks two times and sadly we lost him earlier this year, but he wrote so effectively about the Adirondack region. Yes. And it's so interesting how your film festival is showing this work in progress because many of your events show the process of making film, and that's really going to be appreciated by the people who are aspiring filmmakers. Yes, we have a panel of, of uh, New York State Film Commissioners uh, this year, 
uh, Yoni Bosker, who is the, um, the executive director of the Governor's Film Office, will be here to moderate that. We have uh, Debbie Gedeke coming up from the Capital Region. We have the Buffalo Film Commissioner. We have our own Film Commissioner, um, who are really explaining how to get a film made in New York State who to go to, where to, where to find a location scout, how to take advantage of the uh, New York State film credits, uh, tax credits. Um, New York State increased its tax credit program by 40% this year. So New York is serious about film and we want to bring more filmmakers. Uh, our objective is really to, to build a creative community in Essex County around Lake Placid. Uh, so we are, bringing these people here to help them learn how to make films in New York in this beautiful Adirondack region. That sounds like really beneficial information for aspiring filmmakers and people who are already making films right now. And so far as I'm concerned, the October air always blows in two major events, your film festival and Halloween. And you always seem so in tune with the spooky side of cinema. What's gonna scare us this year? Well, I think this year, Paul, one of the things that's going to scare you is the uh, screening of The Exorcist. And we have not only a screening, but a midnight screening of The Exorcist on Saturday night. So uh, we're already getting great buzz about that. And we're selling tickets to that, actually. There's no better way to see The Exorcist than in a dark theater, wouldn't you agree? I would absolutely agree. One of the number, really, of uh, of seminars and panel discussions we have is women in horror. Uh, we've got two uh, on the panel, uh, two women uh, from the uh, Hudson Valley and one from Toronto uh, who did a, uh, a film um, called Ginger Snaps that is a, was really the initial uh, indie uh, horror film. And um, so they're here to talk about it, how to make these films, how to do them on a tight budget. Um, and um, then we adjourn from that directly into a film called The Monkey. And The Monkey is a Stephen King short story, and uh, he licensed that to a group um, out of uh, 518 Film Network, uh, really. Uh, but uh, he licensed it to them to do it with the stipulation that they could not make any money on it, but they could practice and work their craft and use that kind of material. So uh, we are screening the monkey here and actually following the women in horror panel. So I think that'll appeal to a lot of uh, people that are intrigued and drawn toward that genre. And the monkey, it's a short film, right? It's a short film. And how wonderful that Stephen King gave it his blessing. Absolutely, absolutely. And after Halloween, the whole holiday season is in full swing. Didn't I see a Christmas movie on the list? You did. Uh, we have a film by Candace Kane. She has sold another one to Hallmark and for the Hallmark Channel. And this one is called Christmas for Three. Here from the Department of Children and Family Services. He's not mine, is he? He signed a letter of guardianship. A what? Nathan and Ann Lancaster were killed in a car accident. They named you as his guardian. You come into my house to dump a kid off, telling me that he's my responsibility, even though I haven't seen his parents in over a decade. Maybe we could spend Christmas together. This is a world premiere. So it's the first time it's been shown before a paying audience, and she wanted to do it with us. And so she has brought, really, the cast, the crew, uh, some of the actors with her. So there will be several people here, and I think that'll be fun for our audience. So not only are you seeing the person that directed the film, that produced the film, but you're seeing some of the people that are in the film. Well, that sounds real exciting to meet several of the filmmakers. And your festival, to add to the excitement, always has a gala event, a real special night. What's the plan for this year? The plan this year, first of all, we have an amazing recipient. Uh, her name is Barbara Defina. Uh, her credits include uh, movies like Goodfellas, uh, Casino, The Color of Money, Gangs of New York. Barbara was married to Martin Scorsese uh, from 1985 to 1991, but continued to collaborate 
with him as a producer, executive producer uh, of many, many films for decades after that. So uh, Barbara's there. We're changing the format a little bit. There will be an interview with her. It will be a reception this year instead of a dinner. We're giving her the uh, Kathleen Carroll uh, Excellence in Film Award, primarily for her efforts toward education. Well, there's a lot to learn about this filmmaker. And as always, there's so much to look forward to, Gary, more than we can talk about right here. And that's why I'm gonna encourage our viewers to go to your website. And I wanna thank you and your team for all that you do to make the art of cinema so relevant in the Adirondack region. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to promote this important festival. The Lake Placid Film Festival is one of the major events produced by the organization Adirondack Film, and the festivities begin October 26th. To learn more about the festival, including ticket information and a list of all the films, seminars, and events, visit the website adirondackfilm.org. Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.